in the morning. I also follow up with the uh, previous speakers and speak about internationalization. First of all, I can say that uh, as Nanjing, I coming from Ghent University, and we have also we had also two goals ten years ago that was being in the top 100 of comprehensive universities and being in the top 50 of agricultural universities and today we are so uh, it's possible if you have goals and I will speak about internationalization and uh, maybe the um, person of the Banco Santander he will uh, have some ideas after looking to this presentation and I hope we can speak then about financing of this initiative so I will speak about joint degrees uh, which is I think the summum of internationalization and I will use the example of IMRD. IMRD stands for International Master of Rural Development. And as you see uh, on the picture, uh, it's an uh, initiative that Ghent University took. I am the coordinator of this master, uh, but there are six uh, European universities who are giving the joint degree, but you will see also non-European universities are involved. Oh, there is somebody here who wants to disturb me. So, what I want to tell you first a little bit about definitions and models, because there is a, a lot of speak about joint degrees. I think it's uh, good to, to put the, the uh, definitions clear. There is the, uh, then I will speak about IMRD and how we develop as an example of a joint degree, and then uh, looking uh, to opportunities and, of course, also the challenges of joint degrees and coming to some conclusions. So first, definitions and models. What is a joint degree? Uh, well, in general, it are programs offered by different institutions together. Yeah? So not a single university offering a single degree, but uh, different universities together offering a common degree. Of course, in theory, this is possible both for bachelor and master and PhD programs. Uh, why is it in practice mainly organized at master level? Uh, because, of course, at undergraduate level, you have, I think, two barriers, uh, uh, at least in Europe. Uh, first of all, basic general training. Okay, why should you do that in another country if uh, every country, because there is not real added value, I think, besides maybe the exchange, uh, but there we have the Erasmus program for, uh, and on the other side there is of course the language barrier because at least in Europe uh, most of the bachelor programs are in own languages, national languages. PhD level, also there there are a lot of joint degrees, but there it's student by student. Uh, you make a contract between two universities if the, the, the PhD student is tutored for example, by a professor of one university and a professor of another university, you can make a contract and you have a joint PhD. There is not much difficulty there. At master level, uh, of course, you cannot regulate that student by student. You need to regulate that at the program level. First, some definitions. So, you have a lot of single degrees with curriculum exchange. That is the classic Erasmus program in Europe, but also now uh, the Erasmus Plus program, for example, of the European Union worldwide, uh, and also what, for example, Banco Santander is financing. Okay, a student takes some credits in another university, but he receives only one single degree, the degree of his sending university. So that's not really a joint degree. You have also double degrees. Double degrees normally are two universities who are saying, okay, we make a contract, uh, student follows part of his education in one university, follows the other part in the other university, uh, and you recognize the credits taken in the other university. But most of the time, uh, the student receives two degrees. Uh, so at the end, he has two single degrees, so it's not a joint degree. The same, you have even models where this is institutionalized over a number of uh, universities together. Uh, for example, maybe some of you know Agris Mundus. Uh, it's also an Erasmus Mundus program. They have a multiple degree, uh, not a joint degree. That means a student goes, for example, to two of the universities, then he receives the double degree of that two universities. Another student who is in the program goes to two other universities. He has 
to other degrees. So there is not one joint single degree. What we have done with IMRD is a real joint degree. That means that students are studying in a consortium of universities. They choose in which universities they go. Uh, follow courses, of course, there are rules. There are learning outcomes that they have to have. Uh, they follow courses in some of the partners uh, and receive one single common degree undersigned by the different consortium partners. That is what is a real joint degree and what IMRD has done, as you will see later. Why have we chosen that model? Well, because it increases, of course, visibility of your program. Uh, all the students have the same degree. Uh, at this moment, we have something like, I think, between 150 and 200 alumni already, because we started in 2004. Uh, and so all the students have the same degree. So you can build up reputation. You can build up, while other programs, multiple degrees, yeah, the, the, the students have different degrees. You cannot build up visibility. Uh, it also obliges, of course, if you go away from your single degree as a university, it obliges to have a same vision, to have a comprehensive view on your degree, to have uh, common objectives, common learning outcomes, common quality control system, and so on. It allows also, as you will see later in the presentation, for larger consortia, at least if you don't require that the student is in all your partners. So the consortium is defining the degree, the learning outcomes, the objectives, the quality control system, but you don't require that the student is in each university. We have students who have a diploma signed by Ghent University, for example, who have not been in Ghent University, or signed by Humboldt University, who have not been in Humboldt University. And, as you will see, it allows also, if we have one single degree, what we have at European side, you can combine it even, uh, you can construct a double degree, the European side with, for example, American side, or with, uh, at this moment also with Korea, we have a double degree construction. I come back on that. So a number of advantages, of course, also a number of challenges, as you can imagine. Within the joint, but also the double, multiple degrees, you have so that was the definition. You have also operational models. Uh, model one, there are consortia that have that model. Uh, each consortium partner offers plus or minus the same curriculum. So you just say, okay, we offer now the same curriculum, but each partner as such, you can do the curriculum in each single university, and students can freely choose in which university they follow one uh, or each of the separated blocks or modules that they have to follow for their degree. And most of the time these modules are organized per semester, so the student, uh, but at the end you don't use the strengths of your partners. Each partner is just doing what they were doing before. Model two, there each university offers only one part of the program. And all the students together go through the program. So, for example, in the first semester, they are, uh, I know a program at my university, we have also a joint degree for environmental sciences. There, the first semester, all the students are in the Netherlands. The second semester, they are all in Prague, in Czechia. And the third semester, they come to Ghent, and then they do their thesis in one of the three partners. That's a very good construction if your consortium is not too big. Because if you have, of course, a lot of partners, you cannot go to all the partners. What we have done is model three. Huh? We offer the basic module. Huh? I will explain later why we have done that. Huh? But all students start now at Ghent University, the first semester. And then there are specialized modules, so not the same modules as in the first model. Every partner offers specialized modules, and the students have to choose two specialized modules plus a case study, as you will see when I explain you the program. So it's a little bit a combination of model one and two. So now that is theory. Let's go how we developed our international master in rural development. First, the mission. It, what we put as mission in 2004 was to offer 
a joint master program that gives students the opportunity to compare world visions on rural development practices and policies and to experience the diversity in its approaches and applications. That's so we want to give to the students following our program a real international dim dimension on agriculture and rural development in the world. So the objective is to train specialists in integrated rural development with focus on socio-economic and institutional aspects. Huh? Myself, I am an agricultural economist, so we look more from the social side of uh, the problem. Huh? We uh, take in students who have a technical background huh? and we focus on the social, uh, socio-economic components of rural development. And it's a two years program, as I have, will explain. How did they develop? Well, we, the origin is already going back to the 70s when the Erasmus program started. And a lot of you know Professor Verhey of Ghent University. He was very active in Erasmus, so we had a lot of partners in Erasmus, and some of them were interested in socioeconomic aspects. And so uh, we had exchange at European side with what are now still our partners in IMRD. Then, at a certain moment, Europe was also financing what we call IPs, intensive programs. And with REN, uh, Humboldt uh, and Wageningen, we organized a series. Uh, Maria de Belém here from Portugal, she was also present in some of these IPs with her students. Uh, a series of these IPs, and so we, our core partners, better know each other at that moment. And then also we had some cooperation with non-European partners in the uh, so-called EU Alpha program, uh, cooperation with Latin America. So we had also some experience with uh, non-European partners. And then there was the call for Erasmus Mundus, uh, that is the European program financed by the European Union, uh, to exchange students. But they had also in 2004, they launched a call for master programs, structured master programs, and that was where it all started. In, and we were lucky that we were in the first batch, the first call, we were already uh, supported by the European Union. And there it started. Then we exchanged also with China, with Nanjing, uh, among uh, China Agriculture University, Nanjing Agriculture University, under the so-called Action 3. We had some case studies in China uh, with the help of Nanjing and China Agricultural University. And so there we exchanged also with another continent. So we also linked our IMRD program to the US uh, because at a certain moment there was a call for the so-called Atlantis program and we constructed a double degree with uh, Arkansas University and Florida University in 2008. And in uh, 2010, in the IMRD 2, uh, Erasmus Mundus 2 program, we extended, uh, in the beginning we were only the European partners with some links to non-European partners. From 2010, we have a structural cooperation with non-European partners. The two Chinese partners that I have already mentioned, uh, also Pretoria University in South Africa. Uh, we have a partner in Ecuador, so in Latin America. In India, we have a partner, and so that is the consortium from 2010. And in 2013, we have also taken up another partner from Vietnam, and in 2014, we had a double degree construction with South Korea. You see, gradually, our network expands, and students have more possibilities to uh, spend in some countries. These are the core partners. Ghent is the coordinator. We have Rennes in France, Wageningen, Berlin, Nitra, and Pisa in Italy. Originally, there was a seventh partner, Cordoba, in Spain. Unfortunately, they, for several reasons, they left the consortium. I think they regret now, but yeah, there was uh, internal and national policy that prevented them to continue in 2010. This is the list. I, will, I have already named all these partners. Uh, so you see the six partners in Europe, and then uh, at this moment, 10 partners outside Europe. 
This is how we organize the things. So we have an international management board two, three times a year. Gent is the course coordinator. Uh, so we have local coordinators in each of the partners. Uh, and everything is supported by local secretariats, but in particular by a central secretariat, because, of course, somebody has to manage the mobility, the organization of the course. This is our, our course scheme at this still today. The next slide is from tomorrow on, from 1st of October this year. We have simplified it a little bit. Uh, but so every student starts in Ghent University, takes between 25 and 30 credits in or 35 credits at Ghent University. So it's a basic module uh, to bring all students to the same level. Why we do that? Because we started first that they could start at different universities, but then students didn't see each other, some students. So we want to bring them together in order to have this IMRD spirit from the beginning and also to bring students to the same level, whatever background they have uh, in their own country. Then they can go, either they stay at Ghent or they can go to Humboldt or to a third country partner if they want to go outside Europe. Very important in our model is the case study. We have theoretical courses. Yesterday we discussed a lot. But of course, you need also to bring in practice, social skills. Well, we do it in particular in a one-month case study where students are either in Nitra or in Pisa University. They are really in a rural area, and they have to do a rapid rural appraisal of the area, and so to learn uh, really in practice how you look at rural development. And then in the third semester, they can go to uh, Rennes, to Wageningen, or to Humboldt if they have not been in the first semester, or uh, again to a third country partner. And they can do their master thesis in all the partners they want. So that is for IMRD program. Those who do the Atlantis or the ECA free program, they have the option to go to US or to Korea, uh, depending which program they follow. We simplified it now because also the rules of Erasmus Mundus. We are happy to be selected for the third time huh? because now it's Erasmus Mundus Plus and we can continue. We are again uh, sure for three years of financing by the European Union, huh? but we simplified our scheme. It is a little bit the same, but now we say that the third semester should be in the thesis partner uh, university in order to bring a little bit uh, more structure in the in the thesis module and, and the links with the courses that they follow. This is what we did so far. Uh, you see the number of, of applicants, female, male, and the total students allowed, and also male and female over the years. Over the years, we have between 30 and 40 students, depending also on the scholarships that we can obtain, of course. They come. In the meantime, over this 10, 11 years, we have got students from more than 70, or exactly 70, different nationalities. Uh, Oceania, not yet, uh, but all the other continents. You, so you see Europe and Eurasia, 32%, Africa, Latin America, Asia, North America. Uh, and you see the balance uh, in female and uh, male students is um, well balanced, I think. This is, well, later on you can see, this is the, the, how they perform. We have very good students, uh, and there is a very small outfall, so practically all the students starting in the program obtain also the degree. There is a, a small drop out. You have always one or two students for one or another reason that don't finish the program. One of our aims is in also to form students who are leader, uh, who are indeed doing something different from, let's say, normal students. And you see, 30% follow up with a PhD uh, in our consortium or outside. 13% uh, uh, of the students are now university professor already. Uh, but they work also in NGO, in government, in private sector, in the UN. United Nations, but so we have already 7% of our students working there. Uh, so it's uh, really uh, high profile of students. 
So what is the joint, how is the joint program diploma issued and how it does it works? It is Ghent University who produces the diploma. Huh? And so, uh, but it's in accordance with the legislation of the countries of the core partner universities who signed the, the diploma. At this moment, only the European universities signed the diploma. The non-European universities don't sign, but they are mentioned in the diploma supplement. So we use fully the ECTS uh, system of Europe, uh, uh, the diploma supplement with all full transcripts. And as I have said, the joint degree can be combined with another degree in a double degree cons uh, construction. For example, we have students who come one year to Europe, one year to uh, US, and then they receive the IMRD diploma together with the US diploma. And the same from next year on with the Korean partners. So that makes that our model is flexible in two ways. Uh, we can indeed make double degrees if we want or if a partner wants. Uh, and then, of course, we look mainly to the basic module. If they don't do it at Ghent University, we, we have to be sure that the basic module is more or less the same. The specialized modules, okay, each student can specialize. Uh, and we can easily add partners. Uh, for example, the Vietnamese partner we took in. Uh, we took them in because we wanted to offer to European uh, students also a case study outside uh, Europe. Huh? So they only do the case study. They don't offer other modules, but they are partner because they offer a case study in our model. Of course, they have to accept general concepts and quality uh, rules, that's for sure. So now to opportunities and challenges. First, opportunities for students. I think for students, huh? It's high mobility, so they have access to high-level courses of high-level institutes uh, at all participating in institutes. So their choice, what they can study, is of course broadened. Uh, they receive classes from the best professors in their respective fields. Uh, they have, of course, an international experience uh, and so are exposed to different learning environments, to comparative learning and exposure to different teaching methods. Uh, so automatically they have social skills, communication skills, and so on, without having a course that is called like that. Uh, they are studying in different language and cultural environments, so from the personal point of view, they are of course much stronger, and they are, that makes them, uh, that's why, for example, 7% works in international organizations, because they are, of course, used to be in an international and so it's an, also a combination of theoretical knowledge and practical based comparative knowledge on rural policies and rural development. What is in for the partners? Well, we have also a program of exchange for lecturers, a so called scholar, visiting scholars program. We can bring the strong parts of different partners together and form a unique program that no single university can offer because they have not all the competences or not at, at let's say, world level in-house. Uh, we have, I think, better students. Uh, that's also proven if I compare the results of my students of IMRD with the normal Ghent University students. Uh, they are certainly at the top. Uh, there is international contact, joint research possibilities. Uh, already also the professors have, of course, found each other. They work together for example, uh, by means of the master thesis, uh, and there is comparative knowledge on rural policies from different countries. Of course, there are some challenges. Uh, intake and mobility requirements uh, are, of course, making it more difficult than a normal course. Harmonization of rules, changing course curriculum, uh, and how you handle that. Centralized follow-up. You have to follow up these students. They are not in your own university. And, and so you have to see that they follow your rules. And of course, always finding money. The sustainability is, of course, uh, one problem uh, that we have to solve. So let me look at the challenges first in terms of program. One of the things is how do you bring 
together different educational methods, systems of partner institutes in one organization. That's, of course, uh, semesters are different, uh, timetables are different, uh, how you can change a course is different in these different partner universities, so you have to bring that, uh, and you have to negotiate, certainly in the beginning, a lot. Uh. So also the coherence of the program. Uh, I must say, in 2004, we were also started from, let's just bring together the courses of the different partners, and students can choose from all the courses offered by all the partners. After two, three years, we have seen that that was not a good model, and we have now, we say, look, in that institute, you can only do that courses, because they are strong in that aspect. Uh, rural development. Language sometimes remain a problem. French institutes, English offer is not so big. So we have, uh, if one realization I am proud of, that is that in REN now they have a module in English, uh, because, but it was hard to negotiate with them. Uh, but of course, students that know other languages, they have a little bit broader choice than students who only know English. And always finding a balance between common program outcomes, uh, what do you want that all students learn, and specialization, uh, where do you allow that students specialize in different topics, in different teams, and, and uh, the, strength, the strengths of each institute. So coherence on program, how did we do it? Well, built on the strong points of, your, of the partners. And we have, at a certain moment, limited the mobility paths uh, that students could follow in order to force that they indeed don't take a course in a, of the same course in a partner where we know that the course is weaker than in another partner. The offer of courses, uh, in the beginning it was a wide offer, now we have really per partner uh, a better module uh, which is organized uh, according to their strengths. Uh, scale and individual learning paths. Uh, um, so as I have said, we, have, we are not hesitating to intervene in the mobility paths to have enough students per course of module. Uh, in, if you offer too wide number of courses, of course, then professors don't know that they are in IMRD. Now we work with specific professors who are teaching in IMRD. Of course, there are always other students in that course from the national university, uh, but at least they know that the course makes part of uh, IMRD. We use, of course, student evaluations for updating our program. Uh, if after a while we see that students don't like a course, okay, we either speak with uh, that uh, institute to see what happens or, or what is the reason or we skip simply the course. We have a scholars program, also that requires a lot of organization, and, but it gives a high added value. Language, I have already said, in the beginning the, we told, okay, we will look for excellent students, not only in science, but also knowing a lot of languages, but they don't exist. They are rare. There are students, of course, who speak French and English and maybe German, but then maybe they are not so good from academic point of view. So you have to, uh, that's why we, we said English is the uh, main language. And of course, if students know another language, they have some. Uh, and very important also, equivalence of marks. Uh, marking is a philosophy uh, that I have learned over these 10 years. Uh, in certain countries, for example, in the United States, you have learning outcomes, and if you reach the learning outcomes, you receive the highest mark. In Belgium, if you have the learning outcomes, you receive half of the mark. You receive 10 on 20. So it's another philosophy, and then you can show that you are better than, let's say, the learning outcomes, that you uh, master the learning outcomes better than the average student. Yeah? How to handle that? is a problem, a lot of discussion, and also to explain it to students. Huh? Also to explain to good students who were the best students in their country, and they come to IMRD, and they have only 14 on 20. Uh, I compare that always with the U European Champions League in football. I say, yeah, if you play in your national league, you can be the champion. 
But if you come to play in the European League, you are maybe not anymore the champion. But for very good students, it's a shock. They are not anymore the best student and that they have a lower grade and not the highest grade. So a lot of problems there and discussions both with students and also among the institute. Development and sustainability, visibility is important. Huh? Of course, such a program, how do you build up reputation and visibility also to employers? Huh? Attack EU students, there is still a problem with EU students because national degrees are often still higher ranked than international degrees. And in particular in countries and most of the European countries where the engineering degree exists. Because a master in rural development is ranked lower than, for example, bioscience engineering. Yeah? Because the engineering degree is in Europe a rather uh, asset in the labor market. Non-EU, there is a mistake there, it is non-EU and non-academic partners. Well, of course, we build them in, but they have to have added value. Huh? And sometimes also the European Union is not very promotive to that. Uh, for example, in their rules, students can only go three months to a non-European country and not a full semester, and that makes it sometimes difficult. Huh? Coherence of the network. Huh? We have a big network, but we develop it. Gradually, we try to see what is the added value of each partner. How can we work? Because you cannot send massive number of students, so you work with, with each partner with a number of students which is limited. Sustainability is our main problem. Huh? So if Santander Bank is the person still here, if you want to finance a nice program, huh, please do. And quality monitoring. National systems are not used to international. So we have accreditation systems uh, which are not always fitting in with international programs. Uh, we have asked then an international accreditation organism, EELS, uh, and I must say our experience was good. Uh, but sometimes also there in the international accreditation organism, they have a national reflex. They are also not used to international programs. They look as if if it is a one single program. But it's a one single program, but of course you have to take into account there is mobility, there are problems of coherence, things like that. Good practices, a good database. Huh? A lot of data huh, have to be handled. Huh? How to find the balance between the rules of your partners. Huh? Find the, the workload. Huh? We have we had to search what do we do send at the central secretariat, what do we leave at the local secretariat. The students are in a partner, so they have contact with the local secretariat, but of course the central secretariat has also to know it because everything must go in the same computer, the marks and so on. So it's uh, uh, finding this balance. Finances, huh? difficult discussions with partners because of course they want, and that's normal, huh? Uh, for every student a certain amount of money, but of course you have to save enough money for your central structure also. Visa, problem in Europe, uh, if students have to, from non-European countries and they come to Belgium, they need a Belgian visa. If the next semester they go to the Netherlands, they need a Dutch visa and so on. So there is not yet a harmonized system there. Mixture of degrees, I have explained why we have chosen a real joint degree, because I think it increases visibility and makes also the management easier. We can, uh, all the students printing the same diploma, uh, otherwise you have to say which diplomas we have to print. Of course, there are of, you work with international students, 70 nationalities, sometimes social problems, uh, so you have to be attentive for that uh, and what we try to do and that's why we now bring the students together that first semester is to create first the family spirit we speak about the IMRD family uh, for example we have a Christmas party uh, it's in my house uh, and we try to to create that spirit that they help each other because you as the professors cannot when they are abroad or in another country and uh, so that at least they help each other 
and also coping with bureaucracy. If you work with EU money, it's not always uh, easy, but speaking helps. Huh? Also, so the, the administrators, they, they listen to your problems and sometimes that helps. So I am already at the conclusions. You see, this comes from China from a case study we did in Beijing or Nanjing. I don't know where it was taken. So I think that IMRD shows that the EU, if you use the EU programs well, that it offers uh, tools to build gradually a real international program and a real international degree. We think that real joint degrees are an asset both for institutes, but mainly for students, of course. We do it for the students. Huh? And that it should be promoted more to the outside world. Huh? Maybe we have the same problem still as the Santander Bank. Huh? The rest of the world doesn't know that it exists. It's a question of building trust and mutual understanding with your partners, huh? but therefore this board meetings are very important. I think also that structured programs do yield better results than the mass exchange programs that are promoted, huh? which are maybe good. Huh? Students go one semester to a, another partner, huh? but it's mainly massive tourism. I don't know if the learning outcomes are always so good. And what I must say, huh? in the beginning we started in Europe, now we have a real international network and that makes both for the European uh, partners, the scholars and the students, it enriched our world. For example, I teach an agricultural policy class. I must say, if I teach it now or I teach it in 2003, before the start of IMRD, it's a totally different class because, of course, you learn from each other. You learn also from the students. There are different perspectives, for example, defending European students who have to defend the European policy to African students or to uh, Asian students. Huh? They have really to know the agricultural policy. Why is it? And, that, and the others challenge them. So you can really build up uh, this kind of discussions in your class. So that's my story about IMRD. And I hope it uh, clarifies something uh, and also gives you uh, some ideas maybe to build on also your own joint programs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.